Good afternoon, everyone. Jason here. Today is December 2nd, and this is your aftermarket update. All right. Well, I hope all of you had a happy and safe holiday weekend, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, this is our first trading day back since the holiday. It was uh, it turned out to be a pretty good day for us here today. Take a look at that price ladder there on the left. You can see that we were down a couple of ticks on the CL. And uh, to the right there, you can see that we had a very handsome day on the ES. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, these trades. I'm going to show you these trades here in just a couple minutes. Let's talk about what it is that we did and what we were looking at this morning. Uh, we'll start with the CL here. Uh, it's a bit more complicated uh, it was a bit more complicated here, so let's take. We'll start here with the CL. So, all right, so let's take a look. Everything in the shaded gray area uh, represents the uh, extended trading hour or overnight sessions. Everything in those white shaded areas represents uh, what we'd consider to be the regular trading hours or the RTH session. Let's squeeze this in here in just a minute. All right, so if you take a look, going back into this is. Uh, let's see here. This is Thursday the 21st. So going back into last week, uh, you can see that we were just kind of rotational back and forth here, not really making any strides one direction or another. In fact, uh, as we would rally up, we would come back down, balance, and then kind of slowly grind up. And by the time we got to Friday here, uh, this was the first day after the Thanksgiving Day uh, trading session. And uh, the market again was open that Friday, only for a few hours, but it was long enough to create a very big uh, move here. So again, if you just take a look at the uh, just take a look at the balance area that we were in here uh, going into the overnight session. This is the Friday open, and the market uh, just does basically this uh, opening drive where the market just sells off very dramatically here after the open. The ES did something very similar to that today, and this was kind of fresh in my mind from watching a little bit of the markets on Friday this past week. Uh, this same kind of thing happened here on the ES. We're going to talk about that here in just a moment. And so as the market comes all the way down, it was a little bit over 300 ticks on Friday's session. So that's an important thing to know uh, as we were moving into today's session. In fact, uh, let's squeeze this in just a little bit here. All right. So this will be good. So one of the things I want you to look at here is this line here represents the top of the value area from Friday's RTH session. This represents the bottom of the value area of the RTH session. As we moved into the Sunday open, this uh, you can see that uh, this value area and this value area low uh, were inside of the Friday RTH session value area. In fact, the entire overnight session was trading inside of the value area from Friday. Then. We open up here, and it's kind of hard to see, but right here we open at 56.45 inside the value area from the overnight session and the inside the value area from Friday session. That is a clue to what you may be able to expect on the day. So as the market on a day like Friday where there was a 300 plus tick range expansion, and as a frame of reference, uh, 300 ticks, on range expansion is, well, let's just take a look here. The 20 day average here, uh, the, let's see, this is the, uh, yeah, this is the 10 day average is 170 ticks and the 20 day average was 156 ticks. So you can tell basically the range doubled on Friday. When you have that kind of massive range expansion uh, over the 10 and 20 day averages, what you can expect typically is for the market to try to digest that big move, right? And when you're opening up inside of the value areas of Friday, and we opened this session inside the value area of the overnight session, that there's a really good chance that the market is going to be uh, just trying to digest this new price action, trying to find value and those kinds of things. And that's exactly uh, what it did here today. Now, we were not without opportunity, and uh, we did take uh, this opportunity here today. Uh, our first opportunity that we took was right around... Uh, the volume weighted average price. So let's take a look here. I'm going to bring this chart over. Volume weighted average price here uh, and the first band underneath. So the market broke down, pulled back up into this 17 and rallies back into this is uh, 32. I This is where I take my initial stop of 11 ticks. I tried to get short here on the first band underneath the volume weighted average price. Market rallies up, comes back. What I ultimately do is get back short here and we were looking to target our sweet spot underneath. 
All right, so we were looking to target this sweet spot underneath. The unfortunate part is, is it had to come all the way back up on this pullback and takes me out this little spike on the pullback before it comes all the way down to our target. So I had a first trade was a stop of 11 ticks, and then I got stopped at plus 10 ticks on the second trade. That's why you see us there at uh, minus $30. Now, subsequent to that, I was also in... Uh, an ES opportunity, and you're going to see me get into that trade. And so the ES opens up this morning and really is aggressive to the downside. So again, same kind of idea here, except this time the price opens underneath the overnight session value area and begins this opening drive straight to the downside, right? And so as we begin to break through all of these different areas here, again, this represents the uh, uh, ES profile, as you begin to break through, we opened underneath the value area of the overnight session, and you got this immediate push uh, to the downside this morning. And so, candidly, we did sit and wait some time here today uh, before we decided to get into an opportunity. So again, the market comes all the way down and begins this process of pullback. It was here at this pullback that you're going to see me get short uh, on the ES, and it was at that pullback level uh, that I was interested, right? This is one of our uh, aggressive uh, ideas that we look at. Now, one of the other things that we talked about here is once you got the breakdown through kind of this zone of influence, we were looking to target all the way down to 1775. Now, the market obviously doesn't make it down that far, but you can see that as the market breaks down through this area and pulls back into that uh, into that extension zone that I just showed you, this is the area that we look to get short. Now, uh, again, it was a very nice one-and-done uh, type opportunity in here today, and uh, you'll be able to watch us manage that. But the market comes down, makes a new low, finds your resistance here, and then we begin to use those previous profile uh, areas for our, our targeting area. Now, the market does come down, makes a new low, and uh, we come end up getting out at about uh, a little over 10 points on that ES trade. So you're going to get to see us uh, get in. Uh, but again, the logic there was very similar to what we saw on the Friday profile session uh, where we did open up and just began this immediate sell-off to the downside. And once we broke through some of those key levels, we used those key levels as resistance on the pullback on the way up for us to be able to get into our short opportunity. So again, you can see here three lots. We ended up with, uh, oh, I think it ends up being 10 and a half points on the ES. Uh, we had an 8-tick stop and a 42-tick trade, so just a little over 5 to 1 reward to risk, and that's really what our philosophy is, right? Uh, we try to get into these opportunities. We have small stops, and then uh, we look to take these bigger opportunities. That small stop on the CL today uh, actually cost us a winning trade, all right, because it did come back and pull back 5 ticks over my initial uh, stop location, but that that's the way it is. And then we were quickly able to get back in, and we did basically right the ship on the on the CL, and we were able to get in and ride it for a long way on the ES. And again, as always, we do this in front of a live trading audience in our day trading chat room every day. All right, so I'm going to show you these three trades. You're going to see the one CL losing trade. You're going to see uh, me get into that one uh, winning CL trade, and then you're going to see me get into that long ES trade that rode for a uh, well, we said 10 and a half points times three lots. So without further ado, here are those OTG trades of the day. Wow, that is fantastic, Aaron. I want to come back here and talk about that. All right, I'm in at 25 quarter. Stop is 27 quarter on the ES. too far here all right I'm in at 24 stop up here stop up here right now is just for now is 34 36 36 on the stop 